Okay, uh, joy in the morning. Praise God. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, praise God. We're just adjusting all of our cameras and all of our streaming this morning. Uh, we say good morning to you. I'm Prophetina, and this is Joy uh, in the Morning. So we have our Facebook friends on this morning, as well as our Prophets Teaching Group. We have Live Me. We have Big O. Praise God to all my Big O fans. <laughs> As well as I go, we have YouTube, uh, as well as Periscope. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining in uh, this morning. We're going to have a great time uh, in praise and worship uh, of, the, of God. Praise God <laughs> of our Savior. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you today. We thank you uh, for waking us up to see another morning to see another day. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, because this is the day. Today is the day that you've made for us to rejoice and to be exceedingly glad in. Hallelujah. And so we welcome you in this place, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise and we worship you today. We lay down our hearts, our minds, our souls, everything that we are, Father. We lay it down before you and we offer it up to you. Please receive our offering as a sweet smelling savor unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord, for giving us the mind and the heart to be obedient to you, to be obedient to your commandments, to be obedient to your authority. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Father, for the strength that you've given us in the joy, hallelujah, the joy, your very joy, the personality of joy that comes from you, Father, hallelujah. Thank you for strengthening us this morning, oh, hallelujah. And we give you glory, Father, ahead of time because we know, praise God, that we have received a fresh mercies this morning and we partake of the fresh mercies in the day, hallelujah, as we go through our day. So we worship you, we honor you, we praise you, Father, hallelujah. We give glory and honor to your precious holy name, hallelujah. And we want you to know that you are invited in this place. Holy Spirit, you're invited as the great teacher, as the great spirit of truth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, the spirit of truth that we will in no wise turn away. Oh, great Holy Spirit, enter into this place this day and have your way as we yield the meditations of our hearts to you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We yield to you, oh Lord, this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, worship him with me, won't you? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him honor. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to all of you, Joyce, and to Eric. Thank you so much for being with us uh, this morning. Praise God. Worship God with us today. Oh, hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, bless his holy name. <laughs> Glory to God. I know you're going to do some more adjusting. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Apostle Jonathan is with us now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're doing just a final tweaking of our equipment here to make sure we can see him. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Praise oh. God. Keep praying. I oh, hallelujah. feel the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. And as I joined you, it seemed oh, to get even hallelujah. stronger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise God. God. Oh, and glory. As hallelujah. you join us, it's going to get stronger. There's a corporate anointing that comes mm, as we serve Him. Amen. Amen. And the more of us that honestly want to serve God, honestly want to give Him. The authority that he really has, mm, understand who he is. Oh, then he becomes a powerful God in our midst. Hallelujah. 
he's powerful, but if you want to see God's power, oh, you have to reverence him. Oh, fear the Lord. The beginning of our instruction is fear God. Oh, hallelujah. Wisdom and honor, strength and revelation he gives to us. We thank you, oh God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We plead the blood of Jesus over our own lives. Oh, we ask that you would give us eyes up, that we might see in the spirit, that we might see the truth, that we might see with understanding. Oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Praise God. Oh, allow God to use this time oh, to mold you into his image. To oh, hmm. And we know that there's no fear in God, for God is love. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of what God can do with your life. He's going to transform it, remake it all into power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, he's not going to be controlling, manipulative, irritating. Although the Bible does say to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Hallelujah. He does challenge us. He, he does allow us to go through some testing uh, to see where our heart really is. God loves you. That's where his heart is. God wants the best for you. The devil the, comes there. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. And then you might have it more abundantly. Full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Mm. Let the Lord arise in our midst. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for meeting with us here today, Lord, as you did yesterday and the day before. We don't want to ever take for granted, oh, your peace, your power, your purpose, your plan, your presence, most of all. Oh, we bless you, God. And I ask that you would give a blessing to each one that's on the line, to Willie and Casey and oh, the people on Byron and Al Lam and Jackson and all the people, I can't read the, the names <laughs> as fast as they're coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless your family. We bless your land. Whew. Hallelujah. And when I say that, I know that I'm not just talking about the different states of the Union, but also in Asia and Africa and, and Europe and in the Middle East. We have people on from all over the world, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit come in and change, reform, oh, hallelujah, cleanse, and bring you the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own gentle way. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own special way. Have your way this morning, Lord. Have your way. You are the mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. And you're welcome. Hallelujah today in this place. We know uh, that the battle is won <laughs> as long as the presence of God is with us. As the Israelites had the presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant that housed the Ten Commandments and the Law, long as that was with them, they were, you know, victorious. And we know that we're victorious through Christ Jesus, but we know that when his presence is with us, his tangible presence, 
is with us. We don't need to do anything. We just let him do all that that he wants to do in our midst. And that's where we are in the mornings. We want to let you know that we are Holy Spirit people. <laughs> we are people, you know, of the word of God. Uh, we are people who believe in Jesus and the power of Jesus, the miracle working power for salvation, for healing, oh, for peace, the whole entire covenant uh, that Jesus established with us, the new covenant. And so we are people who, who want the presence of God with us and who want to have the tangible presence of God with us because we know that in the presence of God, hallelujah, there is an absence, what a fear, there's love, there's joy, oh, hallelujah. And so he does the work for us. And so we worship him and we praise him and we give him glory and honor. And we want him to know and we want you to know as well that the Holy Spirit is always welcome in our midst. God is always welcome here. He has a place to do whatever he wants to do, to say what he wants to say. Hallelujah. So we thought we would just get that, you know, straight with you <laughs> from the beginning, praise God. And so we may be a little bit different. Uh, what we do is probably a whole lot different than what some other people are doing, you know, as far as their ministry and their call is concerned. But we are just so much in love with God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. We want them with us at all times. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. As, the, as, the, as, as King David, <clears throat> King prophet, king and prophet and priest David, he says, oh, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not thy presence, you know, from me. Praise God. And even Jesus experienced just for a second, just for a few moments, when God could not look at his sin on the cross, you know, what was Je what did Jesus say? Father, you know, why have you forsaken me? He felt a disconnect, you know, of the presence of God. And since God, he took all of our sin upon him. And just in that moment, God could not look on him. You know, he, God cannot look on sin. He cannot see the sin. But Jesus took our sins upon him. And in that instance, God disconnected him for him, but just for a long time, praise God. But Jesus felt that he, you know, even Jesus himself did not want to be out of the presence of God at any time and for any moment, and neither do we. So we're in good company. David, <laughs> King David, and Jesus did not want to be connected at all from the presence you know, of God. What did I say? Connected. Okay, don't want to be disconnected from the, uh, the very presence of God. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth is welcome in our midst. And I wanted you to know that, okay? Praise God. And that's that's why we do what we do. We know that the power of God is present uh, to heal, to deliver, to set free, to bring forth even more truth. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Here comes another wave. Whoa, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just receive uh, from these waves of anointing and grace that God is sending and let him do, you know, what he wants to do. We may not understand uh, everything that he's doing and at all times when he's doing it, but we just want to give him license. We want to give him way, you know, to do whatever it is that he wants to do. He knows so much better than us what is needed. Oh, hallelujah. Our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. We're trying to get our thoughts to be his thoughts more and more every day and our ways to be his ways more and more every day. But the word of God tells us that his thoughts and his ways are high above ours. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have something to attain to every day. We have something to grab hold to every day. We have something every day in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost to reach out for every day. His ways and his thoughts to conform to the image of Christ, to conform to holiness, to conform to perfection. Praise God. Every day, our God is an eternal God. Oh, hallelujah. And he's ever before us. He has gone before us to make every crooked place straight. He's gone before us, y'all. He's been a, as a lamp unto our feet, guiding us to his way. 
guiding us to his thoughts, guiding us, hallelujah, to his very presence. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a faithful God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Let's give him honor. Let's worship him. <laughs> Let's talk about today the great things that God has done. Let's remember the great things that he has done in our midst because we serve a great God. <laughs> we serve the one and true holy God of the whole universe, the creator. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him with me. Won't you give him honor? Worship him with me. Won't you, won't you join in? Praise God with me. Praise God. We know that, hallelujah, there's power and added commanded blessing that comes forth when the brethren dwell together in unity. And let's be unified in our worship this morning. Let's be unified in our praise. I don't mind you sitting there driving or whatever you're doing, watching me burn. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Praise God. But if you can join in with us, oh, hallelujah, if you can join in with this worship and praise, you know, it's the kind of worship where God inhabits the praises of his people. It's the kind of worship in this uh, season where God is doing tremendous, magnificent, fabulous, marvelous things in the midst of his worship. Praise God, hallelujah, if you need some yokes broken, praise God, if you need some chains destroyed over your life, oh, hallelujah, if you need healings and deliverances, enter into the worship of God and see what he has to say and do in the midst of his worship. Oh, hallelujah, prophetic worship coming forth in the body of Christ in this day and in this season where God is doing just things beyond even our own imagination. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Casey says, oh, where would I be without the Holy Spirit? Never let me have to find out. I know that's right. I never want to find praise out. God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. Ooh. Oh, hallelujah. You want more power in your life and in your ministry. It starts by seeking God. It starts by honoring him. It starts with spending time. Mm, in his presence and so when we start out the program and we're just worshiping and we're praying and we're honoring him it's because we know where our strength comes from our strength comes from the lord oh hallelujah and every day we find new mercies every day we find new strength it's just like i was i always say about uh salvation uh, i don't believe in second generation christians because every single person has to find Christ for themselves. Every generation has to have a fresh touch. Everyone needs to know God. Father, you can't get in with grandma's prayers, so you can't get in with daddy's prayers. You have to get in because you know who your God is. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the church where I grew up, they were real big on uh, knowing that you know that you know, even if you've been in church all your life, know when you were born again. And when I was at camp, uh, we would have summer camp every year, and it wasn't my church. It was uh, actually the church of a friend of our friend of the families, and we would go up there, and the pastor would ask the question. Uh, he would say, "Stand up and tell me when you were born the first time." And when you were born the second time, and uh, the, many of the campers were able to identify. And of course, they knew their their date of birth, but then they were able to say, "I gave my heart to the Lord uh, at this day and this time and this date." And, and I don't remember the exact date, but I remember it was that it was a Tuesday at camp in August in 1967 that I gave my heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I was born <clears throat> before that. <laughs> Praise God. So it's exciting to know that you know that you know when you were, gave your life to Christ. Like I say, maybe you grew up in church. Maybe you grew up knowing all about God. But there, there should probably be a day where you said, 
yes. Mary, you said, yes, Lord. Mm. You are the authority in my life. Hallelujah. Mm. Or you're walking away from the rebellion, walking away. You know, uh, the people of my generation were known for their rebellion. You know, they had the, a few years before me, they had the whole uh, 60s movement and they had the, the Vietnam War. And so many people were against that, that they would get out and they would march and they would do all kinds of stuff. They would step out from society and, and preach peace and love and all this kind of stuff, even if they had no idea what it meant. Those of us who found Jesus found that he was the source of peace and he was a source of love. Hallelujah. And you couldn't just make it up. You just couldn't treat people poorly and say that was love. Hallelujah. We learned that we had to make commitments. Hallelujah. Hmm. Commitments to God, commitments to one another. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to teach us how to get out of rebellion. And some of us have had all kinds of reasons to rebel, mm-hmm. all kinds of righteous reasons. But God is saying you can't live in a spirit of rebellion. You have to live to, to God. Mm-hmm. How to do it. Mm-hmm. You, are, you have to understand his authority, and he wants to then teach us how to walk in his ways and his paths and his goodness. And our, our job is to be obedient to the Lord. Amen? Yeah. And you're going to be teaching a little bit more about that and, and the truth. And Praise God. Praise Let the God. Lord lead you, prophetess. All right. So praise God. I just wanted to uh, go into the, we've done a lot of teaching on truth uh, and from the Old Testament, but we want to talk about truth uh, in the New Testament as well. Praise God. And Jesus' referrals to the truth. Praise God. And he, first of all, uh, Jesus says that um, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Praise God. And so he tells, and then this is this prayer that he prays in John 17. And in that prayer, this is what Jesus, one of the things that Jesus says. Praise God. Let me get my notes here. Okay. <laughs> praise God. In Jesus' prayer, praise God, for the disciples in John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. And he says, thy word is truth. Praise God. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through truth. Praise God. And so there is a sanctifying anointing uh, that's coming forth in this dispensation and in this season. Praise God. And we're in the season where God is releasing you know, an anointing for truth, for the truth of God to come forth like never before, that we will be, we will hail the truth, praise God, the truth of God. We will want the truth and nothing but the truth. We will desire truth in our inward parts. And that is an anointing that's coming forth from, oh, hallelujah, the very throne room of God, where he has sent an angel with angels of um, sent a warrior angel <laughs> with angels in his entourage, a whole host of angels to perfect this truth in the in this in uh, the earth in this season. Praise God! And so Jesus praying to God, you know, sanctify them through Thy truth. All right, He's asking God to sanctify the, His people, His believers, through uh, truth. And his word is truth. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. And so we talked about the word of God and the power of the word of God and accepting the authority, you know, of the word of God. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it tells us about the power, you know, uh, inherent uh, in the word of God, that the word of God can be used Praise God. And why don't we go there and read that scripture since we're there. Praise God. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? Praise God. And so it means that, that the scripture is given by God, breathed by God into to men, okay, to write down over thousands of years, over hundreds of years, 
the different writings that have been placed in our scriptures that we have today that we call the Holy Scriptures or the Bible wasn't written by one man. It was written by, I think, 70 men altogether, somewhere in that number. Oh, hallelujah. And this word is profitable to us, hallelujah, and it's given by the inspiration of God. And so Jesus says, sanctify them by your word, hallelujah. Sanctify them by your God-grieved inspiration, the written word, oh, hallelujah. Sanctify them because your word is profitable for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, for perfection, going on into perfection. Oh, hallelujah. And that's the prayer that Jesus has for you, that you will be sanctified, not, uh, you will be sanctified by not just a portion of the truth, but by the whole truth, the whole truth that is the word of God. Hallelujah. And when you have Jesus telling us in John chapter 14 and in 16, but in John chapter 14, he says, oh, hallelujah. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the, to the Father but by me. And he says, he told his disciples that right before he ascended into heaven after his resurrection, he says, you know, I want you to wait here. Wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. I'm sending another comforter. I'm sending, you know, uh, um, uh, a teacher. I'm sending the spirit of truth to you and wait for it. He says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Very important portion of scripture for Jesus to tell us that he's sending the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, hallelujah, that we know. We know the spirit of truth because he dwells in us. And he shall he dwells with us and shall be in us. And this for us as believers is very important that we understand that the spirit of truth is with us and it shall be in us. And even more so in this day and in this time, God is stirring up, okay, the the sanctification process, okay, praise God, because of the spirit of truth dwelling in us. And where there have been inadequacies because of lies, whenever, wherever there have been a tearing down, you know, of the body of Christ and the kingdom of God because of lies, okay, wherever you have established your life, your ministry, your call on lies, anything is specifically that has to do with the kingdom of God and with the body of Christ, God is stirring up a sanctified anointing. Okay, stirring it up where he's slashing out all of the lies and all of the gunk and all of the junk that's contrary to his truth. Jesus said the word of God is truth. And we have, we have things that are operating in our lives, untruths, things that we have believed, things that we have adhered to that have not been the truth of God. Well, a sanctification anointing has been sent forth to destroy the works of lies, and to promote the truth of God is the very spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, the Holy Spirit is with you, how often has the Holy Spirit been grieved? The spirit of truth in you, and the spirit of truth in you now, and you are contrary, you're doing things that are contrary to the spirit of truth by lies, Okay, how many times has the, the spirit of truth been grieved when a false doctrine, you know, has been presented? What about those who are, oh, hallelujah, enjoying, have enjoying themselves to cults, to lying religious demons? Okay, the Holy Spirit, okay, is the spirit of truth. Praise God. And maybe this is why in the last days, you know, men will come, you know, to Jesus on that day on the last day and say, didn't I, you know, cast out devils in your name? Didn't I, you know, work in your name? Hallelujah. And Jesus said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. Praise God. I, know, I don't know you. I never knew you. Praise God. And so we don't want that to happen to ourselves. So we want to know who God is in us at all times. We want to know who God is with us at all times. Hallelujah. And we want to adhere to 
uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We want to adhere to the sanctification process that's going forth in us at all times through the very spirit of truth. It is God's Holy Spirit that has been sent to us, the spirit of truth, to aid us, to help us, and to bring us in this process of sanctification. It is the word of God. It is the spirit of truth. Praise God. Working together, hand in hand, in us, through us, by us, and with us. Hallelujah. So let's reach out to God today. Let's reach out to his spirit of truth. We want to break down every stronghold that's been built up in our lives based on untruths. Oh, hallelujah. Any untruth. Hallelujah. Where you have been uh, untruthful. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. God is pulling up the roots of lies. <laughs> Every root of a lie that's taken up a boat in you, God is casting it out and casting it down. The spirit of truth is at work. Oh, hallelujah. Even the spirit of truth, Jesus said, whom the world cannot see because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you shall know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. And there's a stirring. Hallelujah. There's a stirring that's coming a stirring of grace, a stirring of power, a stirring of the anointed, anointed presence of God, hallelujah, for the truth to be paramount, for the truth to be first, okay, in your life, in your thinking, and in your speech, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And how be it, it says in John 16, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, oh, yes, <laughs> He will guide you into all truth. There you go. Hallelujah. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And then he goes on to pray. Sanctify them. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, as he says in John 17, 17. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he says in John 17, as he's talking to the Father Jesus in his prayer for the disciples, he says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through truth. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the question arises as Pilate, as Jesus comes before Pilate, Pilate asked him, Pilate in John 18, 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou a king then? And Jesus, this is when he was brought before Pilate, right before he was, oh, hallelujah, brought to the cross. And Jesus answered, thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone that is of the truth, Hears my voice. Thank you, Lord. And this is the question that is asked in our society. This is the question that's asked in the world today, as Pilate asks Jesus, as Jesus confesses and attests to the fact that everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. And Pilate obviously saying, you know, well, hey, I'm king here. I'm, I'm the leader here and I'm not hearing it. So it's like, he, it's kind of like a put down of Jesus. But it's a very powerful question that Jesus is answering in this day and this time for us. Pilate said to him, what is truth? Okay. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto him, I find in him no fault at all. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so... We question God as well today. What is truth? Okay, we have the various factions in the body of Christ saying, this is the truth. I'm doing it this way. Another faction on the opposite side saying, I'm doing, this is the truth. I'm doing it this way. Oh, hallelujah. We have cults that are in the body of Christ, cults, okay, that believe false information. And they're, they've accepted that false information as truth, okay? And so now we have the question, what is the real truth? Okay, the world has the question, what is the real truth? 
how can we aspire to the real truth of the body of Christ? Jesus says you're going to be sanctified by the truth. Praise God, sanctified by his word. So here we have the promise of sanctification, okay? But we have so many different factions in the Bible of Christ, I mean, the, in the body of Christ saying, this is the truth, no, this is the truth, no, this is the truth. Okay, follow my way. Okay, or if you don't believe it the way I believe it, then, you know, then you are off, okay? Okay, so here we go, tackling truth. Jesus, first of all, says he's the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He says the Holy Spirit, praise God, is the spirit of truth. Praise God. And so he has the word. We have Jesus, the word of God, the Holy Spirit. God breathed word uh, is as our authority. Praise God. And herein is the foundation and the basis for you to springboard from for your the, uh, the authority that God has given you in the earth. Because if, unless you believe that the word of God is true, and then it's given for reproof, okay? And it's given for, by the inspiration of God, for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. Unless you're anchored in that, unless you truly understand that the whole word is given, praise God, then you can ascend to the next level. But if you don't anchor yourself in the power of the word of God that God has given to us as the authority, as the ultimate authority, then you will waver as far as what the truth is as well. Praise God. And so <clears throat> you shall know the truth, the word says, and it shall set you free. It shall make you free. Okay. And we know that there's freedom, okay, in knowing the truth and living the truth. And Jesus is our freedom. <laughs> he is our liberty. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay. Praise God. And so God, Jesus says, I dwell with you. The Holy Spirit dwells with you. He shall be with you and he shall be in you, the spirit of truth. So we know if the Holy Spirit is with us, in us, dwells with us, then we have the spirit of truth on our side. We have the spirit of truth residing with us. How do we manifest the power of the spirit of truth to live the life today that God has called us to live? How do we, how do we access the power of the sanctification anointing of the spirit of truth? Oh, hallelujah, to operate in the authority that God has given us. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. It is true that God has given us authority through Christ Jesus. And unless you know that, and unless you operate in that, Satan is going to come and steal everything from you and continually steal your life, your health, take away your prosperity, take away your joy. Oh, he'll take it all away unless you are anchored in the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus, that Jesus Ask the Father to sanctify us by the truth that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to send you another comforter, even the spirit of truth, that will be with you and in you. Unless you have accepted that, hallelujah, and stand on that and know the power, you know, of that word to you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus' words to you. Unless you fully grasp, you know, the power in that, the authority in that then you will waver as well as far as what the truth is concerned. You will waver, you know, as Pilate asks, what is truth? Jesus is telling him, I'm the truth, I'm the way. You know, the spirit of truth is upon you, is with you. Okay, praise God. I come to witness to the truth. You know, okay, you come to witness to the truth, Father said, but what is truth? Okay, we, and so that's who we are as ministers in the, in the, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, is to bring to you the truth. Hallelujah. You will always know the truth through Christ Jesus, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> praise praise God. God. Oh, and, praise God. And the truth is the truth, regardless of where you are. We give a shout out to the person who identified themselves from the country of France. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We say France here, but I know France is correct. Mm -hmm. but God bless you today. You know, we want to speak the truth because the truth is always the truth. Uh -huh. How do you? you may have different circumstances in your country, in your city, in your state, in your province, mm -hmm. but God is truth. And so we're, we're speaking a language. We're not promoting uh, Arizona, United States. We're promoting Jesus. We're promoting the Holy Spirit. We're promoting God the Father. How do you? We're saying find the truth and, and apply it to you where you live. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
whether you're in a third world country uh, with very little in terms of electronics and, and uh, finances, or whether you're in the most prosperous uh, city in the world. But God is truth, hallelujah, and we have to apply it according to him, not according to our society. Amen. Praise God. We know in our country we've made a lot of mistakes, and, and God is beginning to correct some of those mistakes. Uh, we found that people that have been getting away with sin for years and years and years mm -hmm. are now being exposed in this country. There are judges and there are uh, leaders of, of entertainment and there are uh, government leaders that are all resigning because the, their sins have been exposed. Now, the, if you want to walk in truth, you're going to deal with those sins before anybody else ever comes in and exposes your past or that kind of thing, because God will set us free. Out of the, some of the best uh, testimonies uh, that I've heard my whole life have been people that started out with, with horrible addictions, with horrible uh, problems, and then they say they got a hold of Jesus and it changed their entire life. They no longer are bound by those addictions. They're no longer bound by uh, different things that have happened. And, and some of us who even grew up in the church, oh, we, we find out uh, as we go along that we had a, a religious spirit and we wanted to promote our uh, particular denomination or our particular way of thinking. And then we found out God was much bigger than just our thinking. And there were people that were sincere and people that were following the truth. The thing about God, and you know, we had a movement uh, here as I was growing up called the Charismatic Movement. And, and what we found out about these charismatic, which means gifts, what we found out that was that God was giving gifts to people, not because that they were righteous, but because God just wanted to. God loved the people and he gave them gifts. And those gifts actually helped in the sanctification process. And sanctify just means to be cleansed and purified. So uh, how do you get purified? How do you be cleansed? You begin to use the, the gifts that God gives you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's, there are people that have had incredible experiences. I mean, people that, that uh, in, by the Spirit, have, have seen the throne room of God, and they go there almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't say that they were perfect before they could do that. Yeah. No, God is showing them a glimpse of heaven uh, because that was his will and because these men and women learned how to, to go in the spirit. But what happens there? Each day they're being sanctified a little bit more. Each day they're spending time with God, and their flesh is being... Uh, crucified their flesh is going the way <laughs> uh, the lies are being changed to the truth the the misinformation is being changed hallelujah so understand just like a child god gives them gifts and then they grow up and they learn how to mature and so we're asking god to give eat to god, we're asking that you understand all the gifts that god has given you Hallelujah. And then you mature as you go. Hallelujah. God doesn't wait many, many times. There are some things that, that God does hold, hold back. And he says, I'm going to give this to you when you're mature, when you understand who I am. Oh, but a lot of things God gives us grace. God gives us gifts. God gives us mercy long before uh, we catch up to where God is. And moving and, and a long before our righteousness matches him. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, our whole life, we're working to, to walk by faith and we're working, to, we're growing up in Christ. We're becoming more and more like him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's the greatest thing about the gift of salvation. God takes us where we are, where no matter how nasty we've been, no matter how crazy we've lived. And he says, I love you. Oh, and when you hear that voice, Amen. when you hear that voice, you're like, wow, <laughs> it's worth it all. And then, and then the Lord begins the sanctification process. That's just the beginning. Salvation is the beginning of the sanctification process. Amen. So get on board. 
follow Jesus. The Bible says things like study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. How? Rightly dividing the word of what? The word of truth. Amen? Be diligent. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Hallelujah. So that's what we're doing day by day. We're studying his word. Amen. We're we're getting a, a greater discerning spirit. We're understanding. And by that, I'm not I'm not talking about the discerning of spirits as a spiritual gift, but our, our wisdom, our understanding is growing. Hallelujah. And, and we're able to understand the truth day by day. And more, the more we're like him, the more we enter into God's kingdom, the more we are able to match our, our lifestyle with who God is. Amen? So understand that God loves you. He's given you gifts. Yeah, you're going to, if you look and see all the joy and the power and the rejoicing that are in people, you're going to be excited. If you are looking for a fault, if you are looking for a misstep, if you are looking for a word that's not in due season, you're probably going to find it. I, I've seen people that move in the power of God and see healings and resurrection from the dead and, yeah. and cleanse the lepers, and they're still not perfect. <laughs> so don't wait until you find somebody that's perfect to start yeah. living for God. Hallelujah. Let God arise. Oh, lift up the name of Jesus. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. So we're not going to wait until we've been perfected to begin to share the gospel, to begin to understand the kingdom of God. We're learning more and more every day. And I bet you're like that too. Hallelujah. We thank God for each of you. All where Now, wherever you are, in whatever country you are, whatever state you're in, God bless you today. Our desire is that you be blessed, that you walk and get strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, yeah. that you learn more of the truth each and every day. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're, our ministry is called Jericho Way Ministries. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona, in the United States, and we're, but we're praying for you, wherever you are, that the word of God would be applied in your life. Hallelujah. In your culture, in wherever you are, Mm -mm -mm. God wants you to know he loves you. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be free from all the bondages that are around you or even in you. Oh, he wants the devil's hand to be off of you so you can walk in freedom. The Bible says if you'll do his commandments, you will know the truth. And then the next step is the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. The truth sets us free. So we're asking God for the spirit of truth to be over your life, over our lives, as he's emphasizing that today, mm -hmm. emphasizing that at this season. He's saying, I want you to know the truth. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe everything you hear, as we used to say. <laughs> and and only half the things you see. <laughs> you know, because there's trickery. There's deception. The, the Bible says that the enemy, the devil, is the father of lies. He's... That's just that's what he's about. He's he's about deception. So understand who God is. He's the spirit of truth. Oh, and he desires truth. The Bible talks about truth in the innermost parts. So that no matter what happens, you just everything inside you is truth. Praise God. Let the truth be in you. Amen. Amen. There's a power anointing, a power grace that's coming forth, and I can't read everything today. My eyes are out a little bit, and the words are just a little bit tiny. So thank you so much for your comments. And if I don't get uh, to what you said, uh, then please uh, forgive us today. For some reason, I just can't see uh, all the words that I need to see, and I keep changing glasses, and that's not happening. I got I got glasses for distance, for mid-distance, and for COSA. Uh, but anyway, praise God. There is a, there is a, a strong anointing of, of, of the Spirit of God here, and we've been experiencing His presence, and uh, we want you to experience the presence of God in the same way that we are, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, bless the Lord. And and so for this cause, it says in First Thessalonians uh, 2, 3, for this cause we thank, we for this cause also thank we God. We thank God without ceasing, without ceasing. We give glory and honor. And thanks to God, without ceasing, we continually thank, you, thank Lord. God. Thank Hallelujah. You, oh, <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.
because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. We thank God for you when you receive this word. Hallelujah. And give thanks continually because you didn't receive, you're not receiving this word as it's coming from a man and from a woman. Okay, this is not our word. This is not our wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? We're not, we're not in trickery. We're not trying to convince you or coerce you, you know, in our own way to get you to do something that we want you to do. Okay. We're not trying to manipulate you, you know, in, in, into, uh, into the ways of the world, into the ways of men. We don't want to pounce upon you, you know, for our glory. All right. This is not what he's saying. This is not what this is about. But when you received us, not as this word, when you receive this word, not as coming from a man or for a woman, if you can receive this word and see the truth of Jesus Christ, see the truth of God in this word, okay, you receive this word as truth, truth, hallelujah, the word of God, okay, this is the word of truth unto you today. And this word will work also in you because you believed it. The same word that we speak is not coming from you. We speak what we hear him say, okay? We do what we see him do. And God is manifesting a glorious grace, a glorious impartation, a glorious anointing that has been released on the earth, hallelujah, initiated by the spirit of truth who is with us and who dwells in us. This sanctification process is being uh, turned up, okay, the fire, power of God is being turned up in this dispensation and in this season on your behalf, where the truth will be paramount, the truth will be essential, the truth will be your focus in all areas of your life. There are different stratuses, stratospheres, different anointings, different graces, different dimensions where the truth is going to come together like never before. Oh my goodness. And I can't, you know, I, I can tell you what the Lord is telling me and I can see it and I can feel it. I can feel this anointing. Praise God. I can feel his grace. I know that this is God. I know that God wants us to move, you know, in this particular area, but the truth or the truth is the word of God, the power of God being manifested, being blown up and blown out, you know, in this dispensation. Truth Okay, you say, what is truth? Truth is Jesus Christ. Truth is the knowledge of God. Truth is his word that he has brought forth unto us. And he, it's like I see, I see the angel of the Lord. It's like he's stirring. He's stirring up. Oh, praise God. He's stirring up the glory of God as, in the area of truth, through the spirit of truth. You shall know the whole truth in your inner parts inward part, and it shall make you free. Praise God. We're just saying thanks and keep it going. Okay, praise God. <laughs> Every day. Praise God. Praise oh, God. truth. But I mean, the anointing is so strong here. My toes are curling. <laughs> like, oh, man, God. Praise God. And God means this. You know, this God means for you to know the truth. Okay. Now, when you accept the word, the whole word, you know, praise God, that is truth that is established in truth and authority that God gives you in that where you have authority through the word of God and through the power of God and in his truth. And it is, it is a truth, praise God, that God has brought you prosperity. When you accept that truth and you know that truth and you act on that truth, you are prosperous. It is a truth that God is our healer and that he heals us of all our diseases and that he takes sickness out of the midst of us. It is a truth. And when you uh, um, anchor yourself in that truth, sickness cannot touch your body. You will not need a miracle from God because you will be walking in, <laughs> in the divine healing power of God. You will be, you will be walking God. in divine health. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, God is a miracle working God. He will deliver you and he will set you free. But there's a place that we're going in God, hallelujah, where the enemy can't touch us. He cannot touch us with sickness. He cannot touch us with lack. Okay? This is the spirit of truth. This is the word of truth 
unto you today. Anchor yourself in the word of truth, the word of God. Hallelujah. And this is where we're going to a concentrated, deeper grace, deeper acceptance of the word of God. God is blowing out all of that on the inside of us that's blocking us from receiving more of his glory, more of his grace, and, stand, and blocking us and keeping us from standing in the power of the truth. God knows you need a movement. He knows you need to have that junk moved out of you. Praise God. The waste, the trash, the stuff that you picked up along the way, the unbelief, you know, the lies that the enemy has perpetrated to you in your mind. You know, you actually, you know, you, you have sickness in your body, you know, and you may kind of like confess, oh God, I know God is a healer, but there's something on the inside of you that doesn't believe it, that doesn't, hasn't grabbed hold to it, like you need to grab hold to the very truth of God. That sanctification process that God is doing right now is bringing you to the place where you can grab hold to that power, grab hold to that word, because it is the truth. It will not change. Okay, it is God's truth and it will always be his truth. And heaven and earth shall pass away, the word of God says, but my word shall not pass away. My word will remain. The word of truth will remain. You may as well grab hold to eternity right now. You may as well grab hold to the truth right now and not let it go and shake that truth tree until all that fruit falls down in your in your. Uh, in your place, where you are, okay, the truth falling down on you, coming down on you like rain, the truth of God falling in your midst, you've shaken the apple tree, <laughs> you've shaken, shaken that tree, and all those apples are falling down, hallelujah, you're picking each one of them up and taking them into your bosom, taking them into your truth, Take the, taking them into your mind, taking them into your heart, being established in them. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants you to be anchored and established in his truth once and for all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's right. Shake that tree. <laughs> Shake the truth tree. Come on. Shake it. Shake it down. If any of you have ever lived, you know, on a farm, or an orchard, or if you had neighbors that had trees, fruit trees, you know, and you weren't supposed to be at their tree, what did you do? Go and take, get, you would go and get some of their fruit, wouldn't you? You'd get somebody up in the tree who was really swift and climbing up in the tree, and what did you do? Get them on that branch and have them shake the, you know what, out of that tree. <laughs> the fruit. The fruit. <laughs> shake the fruit out. <laughs> Come on, God wants you to shake the branches. Hallelujah. Come on, shake it. Get it. It's yours. The word of God is yours. The word of truth is yours. Hallelujah. It is yours. It is your authority. Hallelujah. And God is stirring up. He's stirring up. Hallelujah. As he's stirring it up, he's moving everything out of you that is not that is, has not allowed you to accept the truth. God knows where you are. Hallelujah. He knows how to get you to the next place as well. This is his job. So let him Oh, hallelujah. Let him do his work through the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. The anointing of truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I was studying through the, these passages on truth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus lived in a world where there was uh, people that were full of unbelief and full of, of challenges. And, you know, they hadn't heard a true word of God for the Bible said it was silent for 400 years mm -hmm. as far as the, the scripture is concerned. And, and so there was a lot of different ideas that came up during that period. And Jesus, just in the book of Matthew, he says, I tell you the truth. And then he would go on and expound. He said that 30 times mm -hmm. just in the book right. of Matthew. Mm -hmm. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, why Why did he have to do that? Because yeah. people were used to hearing lies. Yeah. Yeah. People were used to hearing false information. Mm -hmm. People were used to hearing uh, uh, rabbi this opinion, rabbi that opinion. Mm -hmm. We're used to hearing the governor and, and, and who would rule according to his power, not according to the truth. Yeah. You know, and, and so Jesus over and over again. Now, I tell you the truth. And sometimes he would talk about uh, the, the doctrine of God. Sometimes he would talk about places that he understood, like the kingdom of heaven, like what God was 
the father was doing. And and he says, I tell you the truth, this is what it's like in heaven. Praise God that you a natural man wouldn't be able to, to understand. Praise God. 30 times, it, it just in, in the book of Matthew, he repeats, I tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. And in talking about that and in, in the spirit of error, okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 2.18. And we know that there are cults out there. There, there are the Christian cults as well. There are people who have set up uh, their doctrine, okay, and uh, some of it is, is not the doctrine of God. It's the doctrine of devils, okay? And so the spirit of truth is coming in such a way that in this season you begin you are going to be see you're going to be seeing cult leaders, people who have been involved in religious cults, throw down their cult uh, for the real truth of Jesus Christ. You're going to what do you mean by out. throw down? They're going to let go of their cultic teachings, okay, uh, that have not been based on truth, and this will be through the spirit of truth, the anointing and grace of God that is coming in a way that's going to unlock, okay, the, the demonic hold that the spirit of lies have, have, have had on uh, these people who belong to cults, okay? And cults are, we know that cults are so-called religious organizations or Christian organizations that have not been based on a truth, have been based on and built up on a lie. You're gonna see these pillars being torn down in these coming days, okay? Second Timothy 2, uh, 18 says, now concerning the truth. Now, who concerning the truth have erred? Okay, so erred means error. So we know then that concerning the truth, there are people out there who have erred, who have made mistakes, who are in the spirit of error. All right? Good heart, want to do the right thing, but the truth is not in their foundational teachings, okay? The truth is not there in many respects. So they're in error concerning the truth. They think they have the truth, okay? But they do not have the truth. They are in error, it says here in Timothy, who concerning the truth have erred. Now concerning the truth who have made mistakes, who concerning the truth are believing lies, concerning the truth have not, uh, have not been 100% in the truth of the word of God. They've erred concerning the truth. They've made mistakes. They're in error. Okay, there are many that are in error today, okay? Thinking they have the truth, believing they have the truth, but they are in error. A spirit of error is what they're worshiping, okay? A spirit of error has partaken, you know, has uh, they have partaken of, all right? Without knowing it, they have been operating through a spirit of error and not the whole spirit of the truth of God. And with this, God has revealed to me, you know, that in this particular place where there has been a spirit of error that people have trusted in, God himself is coming with this angel he, that he has sent in the earth, this destroyer angel, this angel of destruction, this breaker angel that's going to tear down the lies, tear down the error, with this double-edged humongous sword, hallelujah, with destruction on one side and the truth, hallelujah, in love on the other side is going to gut out and root out the error. You hear what I'm saying? If you have a heart for God and you've been believing and standing on an error, God knows who you are. He knows your heart is right. And he's coming now to destroy the works of the spirit of error, the religious demon of error if in the, within the church, okay? It's going to happen not only in the church, in the body of Christ. You're going to see it out in the world, too, with scientists. You're going to hear scientists make confessions about the truth of God like they've never done before. Praise God. It's happening. God is causing that to happen even now. He's bringing an, an anointing of his truth, hallelujah, like never before. And the spirit of error is going to be taken out and taken down. God has got to do this for us because that's the kind of God we serve. Where Jesus prayed that we would be sanctified, you know, by the truth. And so God is honoring Jesus' prayer and he's, he's, he's turning up the fire of his presence on the sanctification process. And anything that's not like God in the stirring up of the spirit of truth is leaving. 
You hear what I'm saying? And then people's eyes are going to be opened and then they're really going to see or they're going to see the real truth and they're going to adhere to the real truth. Oh, hallelujah. I feel that grace Praise going God. forth right now. Wow, that's God. Woo, spirit of truth over spirit of error. Right now in the name of Jesus, take precedence over uh, religious beliefs and, and things that have happened uh, uh, doctrines of demons instead of the doctrine of God. Uh, you base your mystery, your call, and your life on a lie. Oh, God is pulling that up, pulling that root up and out. You hear what I'm saying? And it is going, it is leaving so that you can embrace the true truth of his word. These are people who have accepted a lie based on the truth. Can you believe that? The spirit of God is the spirit of truth. The word of God is the truth. And the enemy has tripped them up in a false doctrine, a doctrine of error based on the truth. Now, how can that be? What an oxymoron that is. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Isn't that, uh, it's just that how the enemy, how insidious the enemy is, where even when he had the same spirit that attacked Adam and Eve, the same devil caused them to believe a lie, okay, based on the truth. Okay, God is coming, and he's the only one that can break that demonic force over you, that demon that's got you held in a lie. He, the demon knows it's a lie, but you don't. You think it's God. It's not God. God ain't in it, never was in it, and he's going to bring the light of his truth through his spirit. Oh, in those places. Hallelujah. You're going to see the so-called denomination, cultic denominations tumble. They're going to tumble. You hear what I'm saying? Praise God. The lead are going to come out and confess, you know, and repent, hallelujah, for the error of their ways, for believing lies and promoting others to believe the lie. Oh, yes, God is saying it. It's happening. Woo, praise God. I want to share a couple of things from history hallelujah. that have that, uh, uh, been presented to help people with their pride. You know, one of the things that happens is we begin to uh, – lift up people that are successful mm -hmm. to such a place we think there's something more than just people mm -hmm. and in roman times they would have these huge parades for victorious generals mm -hmm. and they would uh, the generals would set this up and they would they would have this huge thing to honor them and so they would bring the the wealth from the land that they had just conquered mm -hmm. and they would bring uh, the brightest minds and the and the people they had now subjugated and, mm -hmm. and they would have all of these uh, things of wealth and honor and prestige and the people would be lined up cheering the great victors mm -hmm. but they knew that what would happen is that the people would go a little overboard and they would begin to call them gods mm -hmm. and so they assigned a servant to ride in the chariot mm -hmm. with this general and he said you're just a man don't forget, you're just a man. You're just a man. And say that over and over and over again to keep them grounded. Mm -hmm. But what happens is I, I actually uh, had a friend of mine who was a part of a cult back in the 70s. And, uh, it's, and he told me how uh, these things got perverted along the mm -hmm. way. And this, these guys were extreme. They would memorize two verses of scripture every single day. And they would, and I thought, well, that sounded pretty cool. But then he told me not only that, but they would go over a hundred verses that they had already learned. So I mean, these guys are pouring scripture into their the word of, the truth. Word of truth. But what but, happened was but. they started giving honor to the person that was in charge. Mm -hmm. uh, David Moses or something like that was and what they called him. To give honor, so to honor to. But what happened is now they began to say, okay, instead of memorizing two verses of scripture, mm -hmm. we're going to memorize one verse of scripture and one verse of uh, one wise statement from, from, from the leader. Mm -hmm. And it got to the place where they were consumed as much with the leader as they were with Jesus. Mm. And pretty soon, he got a big head, and he began to receive a lying spirit. And mm -hmm. he started saying things that weren't the truth and perverting the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen tracks that, that were just full of perversion. Mm -hmm. You know, people trying to use men and women as uh, uh, 
almost as prostitutes mm -hmm. to bring people in. It's like, well, anything goes. If if we're getting more followers, then mm -hmm. we can do anything to get them there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, 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 no. It has to be pure mm -hmm. all the way through to, to receive from God. And it just, it seeps in like that. And we see that all the time with leaders. Mm -hmm. we, we we begin to to worship the leader rather than Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that, that we have these great, ministries or great churches and as soon as the leader passes away it pretty much just collapses mm -hmm. because we're lifting up men more than god and mm, now that's not to say we can't praise god for men and women that have gone before us or that are with us that are gifted and holy and are serving god thank god for them but we just have to have that whisper you're just a man mm -hmm. We just have to have that whisper, you're just a man. Don't go overboard. And we need to tell our people, you're just a man. You know, when, when they tried to get Paul and Barnabas, they, in one minute they're, they they see a healing power of God, and they're calling them Jupiter and Mars like they were the gods. Yeah. And he said, no, 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 stand up. We're just men like you are. It's, a, it's Jesus that has been honored here. And, you know, within... The next few verses, they're ready to stone them. You know, <laughs> yeah. come on, don't be that fickle. But it's not about the people; it's about our God. Amen. Hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can I do a couple here? Sure. Praise God. I talked to you about thirty different times that Jesus uses the the verse or the phrase "I tell you the truth" because people need to know. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes I tell my wife, let me know when you're prophesying or when you're giving me Tina's version. I can't always tell the difference. You know, <laughs> praise God. You know, uh, in let, Acts, let me just, let me just, let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit, okay? It's not the easiest thing to be married to a prophet, okay? Uh, and especially when you have a relationship in the natural realm and you also have a relationship in the spirit realm. Uh, and so as we are familiar with each other on a daily basis, praise God. And we are, you know, familiar with each other. We know each other. We love each other. Uh, and, and because it's so natural, you know, uh, for us to be together and to be around each other, it is not always easy uh, to discern, you know, when I'm actually in the spirit realm I'm prophesying or when I'm just being myself. Praise God. Uh, and so that's what that, that's what he's talking about. You know, being, you know, uh, like I said, the spouse of a prophet is one of the hardest jobs because you have to be very gifted in the area of discerning, a discerning of spirits. So we're asking God to increase Jonathan's discernment at all times, praise God, because God, if God will just give me a thought or a word, and a lot of times, you know, it's like even hard for me to distinguish whether it's me or whether it's God. You know, you get that close to God. And so as Jesus said, I say what I hear him say, and I do what I see him do. Well, the two, have come, the two are coming more and more together where, you know, there's not that much of a separation, you know. And so Jonathan has to discern, now, who is this speaking to me now? Is it my wife or is it, is it God, you know? And so it's harder for him, you know, it's harder for the spouse of a prophet, especially when, as a prophet, you are operating in the prophetic almost 24-7, you know, praise God. And so that's what he's saying. He's lovingly saying that it's, it's amen, not the amen. easiest place to be. <laughs> okay, so look at, um, if you have your Bibles, look at Acts 20, 30. Praise God. I'm going to read this so you can be with me here. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. That's straight of error. Okay. Straight of lies. And so let me back up a little bit. Verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So when when the leader's away, people will play. When the leader's away, with people will try to, uh, you know, I see this all the time where people are positioning themselves for power, even within the church. It's like, that's not what this is about. This is not a power trip. This is not a, a raising up your own name. This is lifting up the name of Jesus. If you need a ministry, uh, we're finding out over the years that the Holy Spirit will open up a ministry 
for you. Maybe not. Maybe you're not all called to be uh, in the pulpit. Maybe the Lord wants to use you in a in a business setting or at school or or online or someplace else. God has a place for you if you will be faithful. So he says, therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. It says, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Praise God. Thank so God. people are going to try to mess things up. When the leader's away, people are going to be trying to you know, get, get a position. But it's not about positions. Mm -hmm. It's about your relationship with God. It's your, about your position with God, not with men. Hallelujah. So understand the truth is with God and not with people. People, the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all else and is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Exactly. So even when, like we were talking about, the great thing is that God is using men and women today in power and strength and healing, mm -hmm. all kinds of things words of wisdom and prophecy hallelujah but watch because if you look at first corinthians 14 uh, it, it tells about using the prophetic in church and it is saying let two or three speak and but it also says oh, let the others judge mm -hmm. hallelujah. one we need to judge for uh, interpretation because a lot of times the prophetic person will see a vision or they'll speak in a parable and we'll need an interpretation mm -hmm. of what that what God is really saying with that picture or with that uh, parable. But the other thing is to say when they're getting off, I remember when we were first learning about the prophetic, I had some friends and we would get together and, and we would worship together. And then we began to hear some things from God and we would speak them out. Uh, but rather than go do this in public, we did this with just the four of us, but after we were finished, we would stop and say, okay, now how did things go? And we were all friends, so there was no judgment involved, mm -hmm. but we would say, okay, I think you started out in the spirit for the first few minutes, and then all of a sudden, you kind of got into Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not what I want. You had an experience like that where you got so excited in the spirit that you prophesied and it didn't come to pass, mm -hmm. and you silenced yourself for all, all around mean, a year. It wasn't excitement in spirit for him; it was excitement in carnality. And, and oh. we were very excited for friends, and you know this uh, pr prophecy group that we had gotten together, and uh, we began to prophesy to each other based on what we wanted in our prayers and stuff like that. We got really into carnality and into a flesh area, and so when I realized that some of the things that I said did not come to pass. Yeah, that's when I said, Lord, I'm not prophesying again. Don't let me prophesy again until I can be 100% sure that it is your word and it's not coming out of, you know, anything on the inside of me. Uh, again, we want the Excuse truth. Me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Would you tilt? Yeah, and then tilt this one. Let's tilt that one down this way. Down. This one? Yeah, and tilt it forward. Top forward. Yeah. Tilt it down another way. Yeah. There. Oops. They're already getting our legs. <laughs> I know, that's, I, that's maybe I wanted it the other way. Yeah, praise God. And so we talk about truth, okay? John, First John 2, 21. He says, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of truth. No lie is of the truth. If you are telling lies, oh, hallelujah. If you're living on a lie, if you built, built up your ministry on a lie, your life on any kind of lie, you cannot pretend that it's the truth. You may be pretending that it's the truth, but no lie will ever be the truth. It cannot be the truth, okay? And so just remember that, that you want to operate in the truth of God. And if there's any lie uh, that's coming forth in your life, through your life, out of you, by you, then it is not the truth. It never can be the truth. All right. And no matter how you dress it up, 
okay? No matter how you uh, uh, rationalize the fact that you had to tell that lie, you had to tell that fib, you had to do what you had to do, okay? It will never be the truth. No lie is of the truth. No lie, not any lie, is of the truth, okay? And so, um, 1 John 2, 27 says, but the anointing which you have received of him, of Jesus, abides in you. The anointing that you have received of the Holy Ghost abides in you, all right? And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even at it, as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. All right, the things that you know on the inside of you that, that are true, but the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. Okay, the Holy Spirit cannot teach you a lie, will not teach you how to lie, will not, okay, accept a lie. The spirit of truth, okay, when it sees the lies that have been perpetrated in your life, sees the lies that have been built up in the pillar of your life and of your ministry and of your family. It has to go around those because the truth is not a lie, okay? Oh, hallelujah. So God is coming forth in this great anointing and this dispensation to destroy the building blocks of lies, okay, that have been built up so the power of his truth can come forth in you, through you, and by you in the manifested power that God assigned it to have not weakened in you, not having your authority weakened by lies, okay? Oh, hallelujah. My little children, let us not love in word, okay? Let us not love each other in word. Oh, I love you, and neither in tongue, okay? But in deed. Let us love each other in deed and in truth, okay? Speaking the truth always in love. All right, when we love each other, Bishop, okay, hallelujah, it is the love that is indeed in what you do to show your love and in truth, in the truth of the spirit of the living God, who is the spirit of truth, in the truth of Jesus, who says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. He didn't say that I'm the way, I'm alive, and I'm the life, okay, praise God. And so there are some, it says here, that have gone off into error, okay, believing a lie, promoting the lie as truth. Okay, and so brethren, in James 5, 19, it says, if any of you do err from the truth or have an error or in error uh, from the truth and one convert him. Okay, so it, it's letting us know that even though the truth is there, praise God, there is an opportunity, you know, for us to, uh, to err to, to, from the truth, okay, to be an error concerning the truth. You know, accepting a lie as truth. And no matter how you dress it up, remember, a lie is a lie, and it can never be the truth. It will never be the truth, okay, uh, according to what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. He, of his own will, he begat us with his word of truth. Jesus, with his will, begat us, brought us in to the kingdom through his own, very own word of truth, okay, his very own word of truth. Praise God. And so when you operate any way outside of the truth, okay, you're not operating in the fullness of the glory that God has given you. You're operating crippled. And it has been said in, in times past that the body of Christ is the great sleeping giant. We, have, we are a giant with the power and the authority of God. And we're not using the power and the authority of God the way that God intended for us to use it, you know, all the time. Okay. Praise God. And so God is causing a wake up, an awakening uh, to come forth, an awakening anointing uh, to come forth. And it is a founded, praise God, in his truth, okay, in the very essence and the power of truth, praise God. And so the truth is that the word of God is true, okay? The truth is that Jesus is the truth. The word is the truth. Praise God. And if you're operating in any way outside of that word, then you must step back into the covenant of God through his word of truth. And so what God is doing in this day is sending a drawing anointing. He's sending a drawing uh, a call to you. Hallelujah. The calling of God to, to come in to this place of refreshing, 
to come into this place of anointing, to come into this place of grace that he's hewn out for you. And in that place of grace, as you're stepping into this next echelon, this next level, this next dominion, uh, this next dimension, you know, of uh, your relationship with him, it is devoid of lies. It is devoid of the spirit of error because God has sent his angel to cut that out, to cut the lies out. And in many cases, it's very hard to distinguish between the truth, okay, and a lie. You know the enemy came to at to Eve and perpetrated a lie based on the truth. You know that the enemy came to Jesus and perpetrated a lie based on the truth of the word of God. And so in, you know, we let the wheat grow, we let the tares grow up with the wheat. And then God has, is sending angels now, the angels of the harvest, and the angels are the ones that are going to destroy uh, uh, the, the, the tares that have been twined with the wheat. So find a distinction, okay, an intricate operation, an intricate, uh, uh, a very intricate operation that the Holy Spirit is doing now to separate the tares that have grown up with the good wheat that God has given you, the good word that God has given you, the good truth that God has given you, the lies that have come in with it, the spirit of error that has come in with it, the misunderstandings that have come in with it cannot remain in this next level of grace. Okay, and so God is sending forth, hallelujah, his anointed angels to destroy the works of the evil one in you regarding the spirit of error. You're going to see the spirit of error in cults and in, 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 in churches and in the body of Christ, you're going to see that spirit drop. You hear what I'm saying? Just like, uh, you, uh, you know, the scriptures tells us that we, uh, we saw, we saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, bam, out, spirit of error, gone, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And you're going to wake up to a brand new day. I don't know if any of you have seen The Wiz or The Wizard of Oz. There's a great uh, scene that I really love, a very spiritual scene for me uh, in this movie, praise God, where you have the evil queen, or in the old whiz, the black, you know, the the, the dark witch, <laughs> praise God, and in her, in her lair, she had all these minions, you know, that worked for her, but it's very, 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 very evident, you know, in uh, the uh, the whiz, the one with Michael Jackson and Diane Carroll, I mean, Diane, uh, Diana, Diana Ross, uh, where, you know, you have these evil minions. She has her whole horde of evil minions doing her evil biddings, okay? But when the evil died, when Dorothy put the water on, the, on this evil witch and she melted and she died, okay, the, e the minions that she was controlling and sending out to do her bidding, they had this evil skin on them, okay? And they were ugly and evil. But as soon as she died, as soon as the power of the power of error was taken away from them, they were able to unzip, okay, come out of the evil skin. I mean, they actually stepped outside of the evil skin and left it on the ground and came forth, you know, in happiness and in joy, you know, and in peace. And so that reminds me of and is, is an example of the spirit of error and how the spirit of error can so be upon you, can invade your life and cover you. Uh, you know, and cause you to do and to think and to be evil. But once that spirit of error is removed, you come out of that old skin and into the new skin, hallelujah, the new life, the new day, you know, that God has given you. And one of the songs that they sing in, you know, that movie is a brand new day. <laughs> it's a brand new day. They have been delivered from the spirit of error. They have been delivered from the spirit of evil and they take off you know, what that spirit brought to them and arise into the new and the freshness, you know, of who they really were in the first place, the real truth. And so that's what God is doing. It, it is, uh, if you haven't seen, you know, that movie lately, you know, The Wiz, uh, then this particular, <laughs> this particular scene is so uh, indicative. I mean, it just, it just shows you the power of good and how you have been controlled by evil, don't even know you've been controlled by evil, 
until that evil presence leaves. And then when that evil presence leaves, you have the freedom uh, to live the truth of God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. It's absolutely awesome. And that's how God, um, the way in which God is going to be bringing about this anointing and this grace in this last day for truth. And we have been on truth almost for two weeks now. We're going to continue as the Holy Spirit leads us to continue to speak, you know, on the grace of God that's being manifested, you know, by the spirit of truth. We're hailing the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. We're, we're doting on the spirit of truth because we know that that's what we want. That's what we need. That's what God is sending to us in, I mean, just unprecedented ways. Praise God. Watch, you know, cult leaders are coming down <laughs> to the truth. There's another issue that, that we've talked about in times past that mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the truth, and that is, let's let's flip that from leaders who have a big head to people mm -hmm. that are so shy Everyday and, people. and mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. And God begins to use you, and you're like, oh, look, God is using me. Here, mm -hmm. God is using me. Uh, he'll never use me. He'll never use now, that's for preachers. That's, you know, there was a, I mean, for for centuries, actually, there was so much uh, about uh, God only using the priests, only using the ministers, mm -hmm. that, that the people of God hardly did anything. Yeah. And they believed that. And you often talk about people that have a false humility. Mm -hmm. It's like God is using you. Stand up and, and be strong in who you are and how God Absolutely. is using you. Absolutely. And I believe one of the greatest things God is doing is saying, I can use you everywhere. I, not just in the pulpit. Amen. I can That's use you right. in Sunday school. I can use you in the workplace. I can use you at school. Yes. I can use you everywhere. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're the great Walmart minister. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Where you walk in and you begin to bless the babies and mm -hmm. after you bless the babies then you begin, begin to talk to the parents and, yeah. and bless the parents and minister to them mm -hmm. and you just use that as a springboard yeah. to to uh, minister yeah. wherever you can yeah. and, yeah. and and you notice people with uh, cool clothes or fun hair or, or something a little uh, distinctive and, and you use that as a compliment yeah. and then a conversation starter mm -hmm. and pretty soon you're sharing the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's Amen. what we need to learn is how to how to use our conversations for Christ. Amen. How to do it. And and to make it natural. That's the greatest gift that you have is how natural it all is. You know, Amen. is that uh, you just have to start a conversation mm -hmm. pretty soon. You know, where are you going to church? And how mm -hmm. can you know, I bet God wants to do something in your life. Or mm -hmm. then you then the prophetic kicks in and you're like, I see God has a ministry for you. I see you're called to do this, you're called yeah, to do that. God. And yeah. then they begin to weep in front of us mm -hmm. <laughs> because they know that God's been talking to them for a long time. And now God is using you to stir up that yeah. gift. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's so cool mm -hmm. when when the Holy Spirit gives you a word of wisdom or a yeah. word of knowledge, and all of a sudden they realize that. That God's presence is with them. Amen. Hallelujah. And they're just like in shock. Amen. Hallelujah. But I, I started off by talking about the people that are so shy uh, that they won't use their gifts. Yeah. Uh, what, can you add to that? Can I add to it? Well, I'm, it hasn't ever been me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would not say that I ever had a shy bone. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, God has left me without words, but shyness you know, has not been a part of the personality or the character makeup uh, that God has given me. And, and there have been times, honestly, that I didn't really understand shy people, what their issue was. Just talk, just say it, just do it. But then as I, you know, got older and more mature, understanding uh, that that um, you are born with a certain char characteristic, born with a certain propensity, you know, in your personality. And I think I was, I came out talking, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I came out, I was born talking. So, uh, and in, as a matter of fact, um, in every marking period of my whole life, uh, from kindergarten to ninth grade, every marking period, but you know, you get report cards in the marking periods, I would get A's, uh, some B's, and but the teacher would uh, complain. You know, she talks entirely too much. <laughs> it was time to do acting or stage presentations. Don't you be pick me, pick me. You know, any time it was, it was, there was an availability to be in front of people and to to to, to show. Off 
to speak, you know, I would always want to be the one. And would be, I wasn't picked to be up front. You have fear, you have uh, low self-esteem, you don't believe that anybody's going to listen to you or hear you. Uh, praise God. Uh, the authority that you have in saying what God is telling you to say is just that. You have authority. Whether they are rich, whether they are poor, whether it's your family members, whether it's your church family members, whether it's a crowd of 50 million people, 50,000 people, 5,000 people, 50 or 5 people, or one person, one-on-one. -on -one. When God tells you to speak, when God gives you a word, hallelujah, in that word is the authority of God, the very authority of the creator himself, that you have the sovereignty of God in your mouth when you speak. And that's how I see it, you know, when I do speak. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. That doesn't matter too, but just let it go now. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. That is all by itself. Oh, hallelujah, the sovereignty of God, the dominion of God, the authority of God is given to you when you speak forth what God says. Okay, not what you say. I'm talking about when you speak forth what God has said, what God has given you to say. Jesus said, I say what I hear the Father say. And so that's where the breakdown is. Again, and the Father says it, he's given it to me to say, but I'm not saying it. So in that in that gap between God saying it, okay, and then you saying it, that's where all the trouble is. That's where the shyness is. That's where the fear is. Okay, uh, that's where it's it's coming. Okay, but if you could look beyond yourself and your shyness, you don't have to be an outspoken, upfront, in the front kind of person like me to hear the voice of God and to do what God is saying to do. Okay, because if God is telling you to do it. He knows already that you're shy. He already knows about your personality makeup. Okay, you don't have to be a person like me to be able to say or have the personality that I have to be able to say things. Okay, you don't have to want to be a star up front in front of people to speak for God. Okay, all you have to do is remember who's telling you to speak and whose authority that you're standing in. All right, it is not your authority, so you bypass yourself, you bypass your shyness. Okay, it's not even about the shyness because no shyness is in the Word of God. When you speak forth what God is saying, shy does not come into place there because because what you're doing is putting what God is telling you to say, you're putting it, you know, on you like it's you saying it. Okay, like it's you, you know, and it's not you, it's God saying it. So allow God to use you as his instrument, whether you're outspoken, whether you're shy, no matter what your personality is, God already knows that. Come up outside of yourself. Paul said, I die daily. I die daily. Just die. All right? <laughs> just die. Let that shine. Just die. Okay? Let it die. Let it go. Okay? Just let it go. I'm not saying that you don't have to be shy, but what we're saying is you got to say what God is telling you to say. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you're shy or not. Say what God is telling you to say. This is not you talking. It's God speaking through you. And like when my big brothers used to come and back me up, man, you know, getting into, you know, little wrists and tiffs around the neighborhood. And I knew my big football playing brother was a, you know, big linebacker brother was behind me. Man, I would get, oh, uh, man, I would get really, <laughs> really uh, confident, you know, that ain't nobody going to mess with me. And you don't have no power in this situation because look who I got with me. And it's the same kind of feeling. I wasn't big enough to battle those forces that were coming against me, but my brother behind me, standing up with me, standing behind me, you know, that gave me the confidence uh, to, 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 to do and be all that I needed to be in that situation. And so your confidence is not in you and not in your shyness. Your confidence is in God and in the word that he's given you. And then one day when I was having a, an issue, okay, with giving a word, and it was to a mighty woman of God, all right, and didn't want to give the word. To her, I'm saying, you know, tell one of the other prophets to give the word. It wasn't even about shyness with me. It was about me having false modesty, you know, thinking that, hey, I am the lesser of the prophets here. You, know, you got some big prophets over there sitting on that front row. You give them that word, you know, let them say it, you know. 
And so, but God had to correct me. And this is how he affected me. The spirit of the Lord came upon me to give the word. There were 3,000 people in the room. He could have chose any one of those people to give that word, but he chose me to do it. And I was like brushing God off saying, let somebody else do it. But this is how he got me to do it. This is what he said after we were wrestling. I was arguing with God for five minutes before I gave the word. What he said to me was, you know, but she needs to be ministered to. Okay, she needs ministering. And that's when God got my heart. All right, that that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about the other big uh, ministers sitting on the front row that could have ministered to her. It was the fact or that could have given that word. It was the fact that she needed to be ministered to. And there was something that God had put on the inside of me to do that. And that's what said, oh, well, I forget about all them. Let me just go and do what God, you know, is telling me to do. And so, you know, many times it's not shyness. Many times it's just sometimes it's laziness. Sometimes it's false modesty. You know, whatever that spirit is, you know, that would block you from doing what God has given you to do, lay it down. Okay, just forget about it. Just lay it down and just go ahead and be obedient and be obedient. Don't be like the enemy and rebel against the authority of God. Because when you don't do what God is asking you to do or don't say what God is telling you to say, you're in rebellion against the very authority of the creator of the universe. Okay, and that's exactly what Satan did. He challenged God's authority. Okay, he wanted to be God. And he challenged God's authority and was in the ultimate rebellion. And so you walk like, look like, and act like Satan when you don't do what God is telling you to say, or you don't say what God is telling you to say. We've got to follow, you know, the image of Christ. Christ said, okay, we got to conform to the image of Christ. And Christ said, I say what I hear the Father say. It's a no-brainer. You hear what I'm saying? It is a no-brainer. How easy is that? You don't even have to think about anything. You don't even have to write down what you're going to say. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to open your mouth and let God speak through you. Man, that is awesome. You have authority, the very authority of God, to speak what God is saying, to say what God, not even your own words, okay, to say what God is saying. Man, to me, that's like, wow. Well, and to go along with that, as people are learning and trusting Christ to use them, uh, why not assume, not that you're not going to be used, mm -hmm. but assume that you are going to be used. Absolutely. And so be prepared. Every time you walk into mm -hmm. a service, every time you walk into a situation yeah, today, that you got a little something that God is going to use you mm -hmm. with, whether it's in public or in private, mm -hmm. God is going to use you someplace, somewhere mm -hmm. while you're there. So what do you do? You prepare your heart. You listen to God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will give you a whole message ahead mm -hmm. of time. Sometimes God will give you one word and says, start here. Sometimes he'll say, I just want you to speak. Trust me. Yeah. You know, and. And you learn how to flow with the Spirit that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's yeah. the key, is to get into the flow of the Spirit yeah. and allow Him to use you. But don't assume that God's not going to use you. Mm -hmm. That's a double negative. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that. Uh, assume God will use really? you today. Assume God will use you yeah. when you walk in the market, when you drive around the corner, mm -hmm. when you're uh, speaking to a neighbor, when you're at church, when mm -hmm. you're at wherever assume God will use you yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Now, if you start off with that assumption, how will you then live? Mm -hmm. You know, are you, you're going to live prayed up. You're going to mm -hmm. live fasted up. You're going to live ready to That's serve good. the Lord. You know, are you, are you ready? Are you ready? We're asking God to speak the truth yeah. through you. Oh, amen. We've been talking about the truth. You want to speak the truth, speak what God is saying in truth, in love and God's timing. You know, that's the, another thing that you learn is yeah, when's the time. right time. Yeah. You know, you don't want to just blurt out something in the middle of, of uh, uh, somebody else talking. Yes, you, right. you need to wait your turn. How to do? There are there is times as you mature where where God will give you a word in the middle of, mm -hmm. of a, a particular situation, but most of the time, it's gonna God will create an opening for you. Yeah. You know, and that, and there will be a time that's appropriate. Mm. And so we sometimes we have to learn to wait on the Lord uh, and to use His gifts. But I'm not talking to you people who who uh, think God will knock me over and and throw me down and give me an ecstatic mm -hmm. utterance and then I can speak. You know, 
you just assume in normal conversation and a normal opening, God will allow you to be used of him. Out of there. And and a lot of people that are very gifted when it comes to words of knowledge, for instance, they just they start a conversation and they say, by the way, uh, uh, God is speak, God is telling me that you have this issue and, and you used to work with that and God uh, has this to say to you. And I, I know another man of God who God uses all the time, powerful prophet of God. And, and he began to ask God for uh, an understanding of why God would show him the, some of these negative things. And God says, yes, I'm showing you the negative because I want you to speak positive into their okay, life. Yeah. He says, I see in your future that this hang up is not going to deal with, or, or he'll say, I see you as an overcomer in this area. Mm-hmm. Or he'll, he'll, he'll work it in he'll, because he's seen the problem. He said, I said, but he'll begin to speak to their future, mm-hmm. speak to the overcoming. Mm-hmm. And, and that has a whole different feel about it, if you will. And God is used him powerfully that way. Now, that doesn't mean that we never talk about the other. And the Lord's will will see you again tomorrow morning. And Jonathan, uh, thank you so much for joining us for our, our, our uh, expose of the spirit of error and the uplifting of the spirit of truth, anointing of truth this coming. And Jonathan is going to finish you uh, today, close you out today with prayer and some more encouragement. So God bless you. And we'll see you again, the Lord's will, in the morning. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Prophet Tina. Uh, you've been awesome. Hallelujah. God's calling us to have faith in him, to trust him, to believe in yourself, uh, that you can hear from God. Because God's not so far off that he can't hear. Hallelujah. That he can't speak to you. God's speaking. We believe God's speaking all the time. And we're the ones that have to learn how to listen. We're the ones that have to learn how to hear and see what God is doing and then work with and follow him. Amen. So let's let's give God the praise. Let's honor him in all that we do and let's be ready for God to use us. Amen. Oh, this is Jericho Way Ministries. I'm Apostle Jonathan Clem and this was, was Prophet Tina Odom's Clem and we're believing God's going to send you the spirit of truth. He's going to work with you. You're going to walk in the truth. You're going to love the truth, and you're going to speak the truth in love. God bless you today. Some of you have wanted to know how you could give into this ministry. You can go to paypal.me slash prophetina, and you'll be able to give a love offering there. Uh, Ask God what he would have you to do uh, to bless this ministry so that we can go around the world with the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of Christ. The Lord wants to bless you today. He wants you to be a blessing. Amen. So, Lord, I thank you for these that have uh, been on the line for a long time. For those who have just joined us in the last few minutes, I ask that you would bless them, that you would bless their country, that you would bless their family in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the Lord sends a blessing to you uh, according to the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom. Let the glory of God dwell in you richly and let the the anointing of God flow out of you and through you and let the glory of God surround us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great day. God loves you. Worship him.
Oh, 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 oh,